Israeli news footage has been uncovered about the Shekhinah glory with this headline. Biblical cloud protects Israel from ISIS over the Golan Heights. Barry and Batya Siegel are amazing pioneers who live in Israel. They're Jewish believers in Yeshua. Israel was a nation established by God Himself. Barry? Yes, Shalom said, God has shown me in His Word. God said to Avram, or Abram, later called Avram, in Genesis 12, He said, Get out of your country from your family and from your father's house to a land that I will show you. I will make you a great nation and I will bless you and make your name great and you shall be a blessing. And this nation is Israel. Look around us. God said something very important about the nation of Israel in Genesis chapter 12, verse three, and in you, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. I'll tell you, God established Israel to bring redemption to all nations on earth. But in the last days, God will rescue billions of non-believers by pouring out His glory, His presence, His goodness, and it will encompass the entire earth. Isaiah 61, 2 says, arise from depression to a new life, shine. Be radiant with the glory of the Lord, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. For behold, darkness shall cover the earth, and dense darkness, all peoples. But the Lord shall arise upon you. Jerusalem, that's literally Israel. The Lord shall arise on Israel and His glory shall be seen on you. God says He's about to pour out His glory once more in Israel, and the devil knows it. This glory will ignite the greatest harvest of souls worldwide in history. That's why the devil's trying to speed up the end times to abort the great harvest. Batya, your father immigrated to Israel as an Orthodox Jew from Yemen in the late 1930s. You were, you had the high privilege of being born in Israel, and your family witnessed the whole history of modern day Israel. Yes, that's right. My father came to Israel about 10 years before Israel became a state. My father was in Israel to witness the historic proclamation of the Declaration of Independence of Israel on May 14, 1948. Jewish people worldwide heard the voice of David Ben-Gurion as he read the Declaration. Gathered in Israel were Holocaust survivors and Jews from many nations who wept and rejoiced as the Israeli flag was raised for all to see and he was recruited to uh, join the forces uh, of the army. And uh, yes, we, I was privileged to be born in Jerusalem, and I'm the youngest of five siblings. Boy, the history you've got inside of you that you just lived, God spared your family's life many times. Tell me the time your mom's life was spared from bombs. It was very interesting. My parents, when they got married, they lived in a very small apartment in Jerusalem. When my father was uh, in 1948, when he had to go and fight in Independence War, and uh, he left my mom with the two kids, and thank God that my mom was uh, ready to go and uh, find shelter in uh, my uh, uncle's house, my father's brother in Jerusalem. and. Uh, they were spared, really spared, Sid, because what happened is when they came back after the war, they found out that their little apartment was bombed completely. And uh, my, my mom's life and the two kids, the, my two older siblings, were saved, literally saved. So I'm a miracle, too. <laughs> Just living in that land, to me, makes us miracles. 
Bacha, you have witnessed old photos of Israel from the 1930s to today. These prove biblical miracles are authentic. It is amazing to see old photos of how barren the land of Israel was when my father first came to the land in 1938. Now to see the same land today with groves of fruit trees and other produce, cities and communities growing up in the middle of desert places. It is literally the fulfillment of prophecy. Amos 9.14 prophesied, and they shall build the waste cities and inhabit them, and they shall plant vineyards. They shall also make gardens and eat the fruit of them. Batya, you know the history of Israel from its rebirth in 1948. The devil has continually tried to wipe Israel off the face of the map. As a young Israeli girl, what was your experience during the Six Day War? From the beginning, the Jewish people were surrounded by enemies who wanted to push the Jewish people into the sea. My father joined the Jewish forces to fight for the survival of the newly born Jewish state. I remember as a, as a little girl that they were teaching us how to uh, run into the shelter to find uh, a hiding place when the bombs were coming. And I remember very clearly that I was trying to run through the streets of Jerusalem, running from the school. Uh, I remember that day I went in th into this basement and um, uh, there with our neighbors and uh, my mom and my sisters, we were very, very uh, tuned into the news all the time. We were listening to the news. And uh, I remember very clearly that on the second day, there was like this joy all over the room and all the adults that were shouting for joy and I said what happened what happened and they said Jerusalem has been reunited we have uh, now the Temple Mount in uh, under the Jewish hands and uh, of course the Israelis the paratroopers they were uh, uh, taking back Jerusalem and Jerusalem was reunified and it was in 1967 and I remember very clearly that uh, uh, you know, I had this injection of faith saying, yes, God, you are there. You are there for the side of, of the Jewish people. You brought us here for a reason. And it was a great relief for a 12-year-old girl uh, that had a little bit of faith in God. Well, Barry and Bacha, you know of many miracles of God for the Jewish nation to survive these wars. Barry, tell me what. You know, during the Yom Kippur War in 1973, the Arab coalition led by Egypt and Syria launched a surprise attack against Israel. And there was a miracle because a commander realized that his troops, they were trapped in the middle of a minefield. So at night, the troops were crawling on their bellies and they were using their bayonets, trying to feel for the landmines without setting them off. And at one point, the soldiers cried out to God for a miracle, and all of a sudden, a windstorm blew in. It's amazing. And so the soldiers hunkered down until the windstorm subsided. And when it did, it had blown away much of the dirt, exposing the position of each and every mind. And the entire platoon escaped totally unharmed. That is a miracle. That is a miracle. One of my producers recently uncovered Israeli news footage from December 4th, 2016 of a biblical miracle. I mean, a biblical miracle. The video posted by Israeli News Online shows what appeared to be an enormous pillar of cloud, dust, and rain hovering over the dangerous border between Israel and Syria in the very same area where ISIS military attacked IDF forces for the first time four days earlier. Miraculously, the mysterious cloud ended precisely at the border without entering Israel's Golan Heights region, seemingly afflicting the Syrian side while not harming Israel. It reminds me of miracles I read in the Bible during uh, the uh, 
Passover in the desert. Uh, the, it, it, Israel was in light, and the Egyptians were in darkness. But the greatest of God's miracles is the large number of Jewish people making professions of faith in Yeshua in the last few years. Watch you. Your parents raised you Orthodox. You observed Torah, kept the feast, attended synagogue every Shabbat, and went to Hebrew school. You loved God, but you became disillusioned with the emptiness of Orthodox tradition. What happened? Yes, I was raised up as an Orthodox Jew, and yet God taught me how personal He can be. And so I was seeking for more deep relationship with God. And I found this emptiness in just observing the traditions. And so I went to a secular school and uh, my teacher in high school, she was an atheist. I do believe she was my Bible teacher. So I expected to learn the Bible from her perspective, but I was really surprised and shocked when I found out that she was a total atheist and she was mocking whoever believed in God. And that turned me off completely. I started working a part-time job with the Ministry of Treasury and I remember there was a girl there. One day we were you just talking about peace in our hearts and, you know, religion. how to be more relaxed and how to get these tensions over. And she was introducing me to TM, Transcendental Meditation. And so I decided to go and I joined her and uh, I started learning about, you know, breathing technique and all sorts of things. And I remember that uh, towards the end, uh, I felt something a bit strange because they asked me at the end to bring a fruit to kind of uh, dedicate it or sacrifice it to the Maharishi. But you know what? I felt in my, in, my, uh, in my inner being that something is wrong about it and I decided that this is not for me. And uh, thank God that I decided to continue searching for God. I was offered another job Shalom. at a typesetting Shalom. place, and so Shalom. as they introduced me to the workplace, Shalom. they handed me a manuscript, and this manuscript was the New Testament in Hebrew. So it was my first ever time to read the New Testament in my own language. As I was reading the New Testament, the words of Yeshua really pierced through me. I felt that this book is a Jewish book. I realized Yeshua was a Jew. I cried out to God, God, please, please show me the way I should go. go. Is, is Yeshua the, the true, true Messiah, Messiah of Israel, Israel or is he a false Messiah? If he is the true, true Messiah, Messiah, I want to follow him, follow him and serve him. him. But if he's not, please, Lord, he's not, let I me forget about him. him. Right after I prayed that prayer, I saw a vision of a man clothed in a long white robe. His bearded face was shining and full of glory. The countenance of this man was majestic. Then he disappeared. I felt as if God was giving me a sign. The next day I went to work, and as I was looking to the direction of the bus to come, I saw the same angel that appeared to me. I saw this long, tall man with a beard and a long white robe. I was so excited, I was so overwhelmed. I got goosebumps all over me, and I was like so overjoyed. I knew that Yeshua was knocking at the door of my heart, that He is the true Messiah of Israel, and I decided He is my personal Messiah, and He is giving me a chance, a new life in Him. Batya knew that Yeshua was the Messiah of Israel and the Messiah of the whole world. How did she know that? The same glory that came upon our Jewish people thousands of years ago. It's kind of been missing, but it's coming back. And this presence of God on the Word of God will cause you to have your own experiential knowledge of God. I want you to say this prayer with me out loud, mean it to the best of your ability, and I tell you the presence of God will make your spirit come alive 
and you will know what Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, all the Jewish leaders, all the people in the Bible that knew God knew. It's not by man's might nor man's power, but it's by the Ruach, the Spirit of the living God. Repeat out loud, very important, out loud with me right now this prayer. Dear God, I've made many mistakes in my life for which I'm so sorry. I believe the blood of the Passover lamb, the blood of Yeshua, washes away all of my sins, and I am clean. I'm not only clean, but Torah says, you remember my sins no more. You remember them no more. Totally clean. And now that I'm clean, I ask for Yeshua to come and live inside of me. Be my sin bearer so I don't have to have the penalty of the sins. Be my Lord. Be my Messiah. Spirit of the living God, Ruach, make Yeshua real to me in a way that I'll understand. Amen. Now, the two of you met in Israel and married. Today, both of you are dedicated to the physical and spiritual restoration of Israel. When the glory comes, there will be a tsunami wave of miracles, signs, wonders, multitudes. I say millions will experience the Messiah of Israel, not only in Israel, but worldwide. We are more than ready to show the world what God is doing on METV, Middle East TV, our television network that is in every television equipped home in Israel and the entire Middle East. I believe that the devil has an idea of this glory that's coming. He's desperately trying to speed up end time events to try and circumvent the glory outpouring that's about ready to hit. Some of the greatest evangelists and fivefold ministers will come out of Israel. I mean, greater than Paul. And they will be flames of fire to the Gentiles. But there's a challenge. The greatest challenge that Israel has right now is that radical Islam, influenced and funded by Iran, have stored up thousands of bombs and missiles ready to launch against Israel from the north and the south. Over 4,000 rockets and missiles have been launched against Israel so far this year. Just in Lebanon alone, it's estimated that Hezbollah has 150,000 rockets stored up. Barry? You know, Sid, one of the things that Israel has been blessed with an invention is the Iron Dome anti-missile interception system. They cost over $200 million, I heard, and about fifty dollars to $60,000 a rocket to intercept an incoming rocket. The problem is, is that they can only handle so many incoming rockets at one time. So sometimes the enemy's rockets or missiles get through the system, and that's literally a danger from the explosives and the shrapnel and the fallout that comes upon the population. And that's why Israel needs more protection, more shelter, more bomb shelters, places of safety to protect our people. Never before have Israelis faced the number of rockets and missiles that Hamas and Hezbollah could be firing at Israel from both the north and the south simultaneously. There is literally a need right now near playgrounds, 
near shopping centers, near public areas to have these bomb shelters placed along the northern and southern regions of Israel because people only have like 15 to 25 seconds to run and get safety in one of these shelters. This is a norm here for us. You have to understand the spiritual strain on the people here is so great beyond imagination. We need to give them more comfort. We need to give them more protection because we can do it for them because God made it possible for us. So we want to be a light to the people of Israel. We want to be a blessing at this time. This is why God has led us to partner with Barry and Batya to build these desperately needed IDF-approved bomb shelters. Barry? These bomb shelters are manufactured to withstand these missile attacks. When the siren sounds, there are just few moments to find a shelter. Once the people enter and the door is secured, women, men, and children, they're safe. On the outside of every bomb shelter is a sign reading, donated with love for the safety of the people of Israel by METV. Everyone who enters these shelters will know that it is Jewish and Gentile believers in the Messiah who have helped build the very shelter that is saving their lives. And many will watch the brand new TV programs we're producing for METV, which will be pointing the Jewish people to the one who saves lives for all of eternity. Yeshua. We are raising the funds to build 700 bomb shelters approved by the Israeli Defense Forces. I'm reminded of the quote of Oscar Schindler. You've seen the movie Schindler's List. I could have got more. I could have got more. I don't know if I just I could have got more. Oscar Schindler said, I didn't do enough. Oscar did what one man could do, a superhuman feat. But let's show Israel what the mishpacha, the family of God, all of us together can do. I call what we're doing double chai. Chai is a Hebrew word and it means life. That's where we get the toast, l'chaim, to life. Unlike English, every Hebrew letter means a word and a number. Chai also means the number 18. So why double chai, double life? The bomb shelter saves Jewish people's lives physically, but METV saves lives for eternity, double life, double chai. At Jewish weddings, bar mitzvahs, when making honorary donations, we Jewish people often give gifts of money in multiples of 18, symbolically giving the recipient the gift of life. So make a gift to build a bomb shelter in Israel and fund our METV television station in Israel in multiples of 18. And bless Israel with double high, double life. As God promised Abraham, those who bless Israel will be blessed. What have you been praying for God to do in your life? Whatever it is, get ready to receive the promise that God gives from being a blessing to Israel. What if you only had 15 seconds to find a safe place to hide? The greatest challenge that Israel has right now is that radical Islam, influenced and funded by Iran, have stored up thousands of bombs and missiles ready to launch against Israel from the north and the south. 
Over 4,000 rockets and missiles have been launched against Israel so far this year. What if a loud siren rang out in your neighborhood warning you that thousands of missiles had been launched? This threat is one that innocent Israeli citizens have to face every day. Imagine you or your children being alone near a school, park, playground, a shopping center, or by older buildings that do not have a bomb shelter. Israeli citizens only have 15 seconds to find a safe place to hide. People only have like 15 to 25 seconds to run and get safety. I personally witnessed about 120 rockets being shot from the Gaza Strip overhead in the sky, heading towards the coastal region and Tel Aviv. Seven rockets were shot towards the western hills of Jerusalem, landed and hit in an area was just across the highway from where we live. With ministry partners like you, we have already started funding the building of these mobile bomb shelters. Each shelter can hold up to 15 people. These special design cement units are approved by the Israeli Homeland Security and the Israeli Defense Ministry. On the outside of every bomb shelter is a sign reading, donated with love for the safety of the people of Israel by METV. Everyone who enters these shelters will know that it is Jewish and Gentile believers in the Messiah who have helped build the very shelter that is saving their lives. And many will watch the brand new TV programs we're producing for METV, pointing the Jewish people to the one who saves lives for all of eternity. God asks us not only to pray for the peace of Jerusalem, but God also promised that those who bless Israel shall be blessed. What have you been praying for God to do in your life? Whatever it is, get ready to receive the promise that comes from being a blessing to Israel. Your double high gift of 18 or 180 or $1,800 will go towards these bomb shelters in Israel and Jewish evangelism. I call what we're doing Double high. That's where we get the toast, l'chaim, to life. So why double high? We Jewish people often give gifts of money in multiples of 18, symbolically giving the recipient the gift of life. Your double high gift of 18 or 180 or $1,800 will go towards the bomb shelters in Israel and Jewish evangelism. You can make a difference. How? By helping Sid Roth build and install these heavy duty mobile bomb shelters. Call or you can send your check to Sid Roth. It's Supernatural. P.O. Box 39222, Charlotte, North Carolina 28278. Please specify this as your double high offering for the shelter initiative or log on to SidRoth.org. Call or write today.